What if I told you that the most powerful earthquake in North America's history is overdue and could strike at any moment? The Cascadia Subduction Zone, a massive fault line off the Pacific Northwest coast, is capable of producing a magnitude 9.0 earthquake, an event that would devastate cities, trigger tsunamis over 100 feet high, and potentially cause tens of thousands of deaths. Experts say it's not a matter of if, but when. So what does this mean for the millions of people living in its shadow? And are we truly prepared for the unmanageable? Well, let's see. The Forgotten Earthquake of 1700 At around 9 o'clock on the evening of January 26, 1700, the Pacific Northwest was rocked by a colossal magnitude 9.0 earthquake. In a matter of moments, the ground dropped, entire coastal forests were swallowed by the sea, and far out in the ocean, a massive wave began to form, stretching to half the length of a continent. Just 15 minutes later, the wave slammed into the northwest coast. But it didn't stop there as it continued its journey, crossing the vast Pacific for 10 more hours until it finally reached Japan on the morning of January 27th. Think about the scale. The energy released by this quake was equivalent to 2 billion tons of TNT. That's a mind-boggling amount of force, and its impact was felt all along the Oregon coast. The landscape was forever changed. And the stories of this catastrophe have since been passed down through generations of native communities. But how can we know all these details so precisely, especially from more than 300 years ago? Here's where things get really interesting. Scientists have studied what are known as ghost forests along the Washington and Oregon coasts. Stands of dead trees have been overtaken by salt water. By examining the tree rings, which tell a story of their own about wet years, dry years, and everything in between, they figured out that these trees were alive in 1699, but not in 1700. This dramatic drop in the land's surface, caused by the quake, allowed a devastating tsunami to sweep over Northern California, Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia. Trees that once thrived safely above the tide line found their roots suddenly soaking in salt water a lethal change for any tree dependent on freshwater. So could the Cascadia Fault be our worst nightmare? The reason. Now imagine a fault line lurking just off of the US West Coast, with the potential to unleash a mega quake even more devastating than California's infamous big one. Recent studies have brought the Cascadia subduction zone into sharper focus. A 600 mile fault line stretching from Southern Canada down to Northern California. But there is a twist. It's not a single neat line as previously thought. With advanced underwater mapping technologies, scientists have discovered it actually splits into four segments, each capable of creating its own catastrophe. So why does this matter? Well, when tectonic plates grind against each other, these segments could slide and create even more pressure, leading to much more severe earthquakes. Right now, experts estimate there's about a 37% chance of a 7.1 plus magnitude earthquake striking this fault zone in the next 50 years. And if that happens, it will be felt all across the Pacific Northwest. Now you might think a magnitude 6.0 or 7.0 quake is bad enough, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. While those earthquakes can certainly cause damage, mainly to poorly built structures, a magnitude 9.0 is an entirely different beast. It could shake the ground for five minutes or more, releasing energy a thousand times greater than a 7.0. For perspective, California's San Andreas Fault is thought to be capable of producing an 8.3 quake at most. But if Cascadia delivers a 9.0 or greater, the consequences could be unimaginable. Tsunamis over 100 feet high, over 10,000 lives lost, and more than $80 billion in damages in Oregon and Washington alone. Emergency plans in those states are already preparing for a grim reality. After a mega quake, the region could face long-term deaths, not just from the initial destruction, but from secondary effects like disease caused by exposure to bodies, contaminated water, and hazardous material spills. And this isn't just theoretical. In 2011, a similar fault off Japan's coast triggered a magnitude 9 earthquake, leading to a devastating tsunami that claimed nearly 20,000 lives. Cascadia has a history too. The Pacific Northwest has been struck by 41 subduction zone quakes in the past 10,000 years. That averages out to one every 243 years. But here's the alarming part. We're now 315 years past the last big one in 1700. That's 72 years overdue if you go by the average. No one can say for sure when the next one will hit, but compared to other subduction zones, it seems we're running out of time and how everything is imagined to unfold will shock you. 
The Cascadia Earthquake So let's say it's a normal night around 9 p.m. Maybe you're getting ready for bed, winding down after a long day, and then it begins. But the first sign of the Cascadia Earthquake won't be ground shaking. It'll be a compressional wave, a rapid high frequency pulse radiating out from the fault line. Dogs and some animals might hear it, but humans will just feel a sudden jolt. This wave itself isn't destructive, but it's a crucial warning, traveling fast enough to be detected 30 to 90 seconds before the real shaking starts. And here's where technology steps in. Thanks to things like ShakeAlert, the US West Coast's earthquake early warning system, there's a chance for life-saving action. In California, Oregon, and Washington, ShakeAlert can send alerts to mobile phones, trigger emergency alerts, and activate public address systems in buildings. Those precious seconds might be just enough time for trains to halt, elevators to open, power plants to shut down, and for you to take cover. But despite this alert system, when the Cascadia quake strikes, there will still be a moment of confusion, dogs barking, people pausing, and the brief, what was that, moment before the real shaking begins. And then the surface waves hit, slower, deeper waves that move the ground violently up, down, and side to side. The shaking grows intense, and soon after, the electrical grid falls, likely across the entire region west of the Cascades, and maybe even beyond. If this happens at night, everything unfolds in darkness. For those at home, the theory is you should be relatively safe. It's not that expensive to earthquake-proof a house. And if a house isn't bolted to its foundation, it won't be able to move with the shaking ground. Instead, it stays in place while the foundation jolts westward, causing the house to slide and collapse. And it's not just homes that will be in trouble. Many larger structures won't stand a chance either. Oregon didn't even have a seismic building code until 1974, and most of the Pacific Northwest didn't adopt one suited for a magnitude 9.0 earthquake until 1994. That means a vast majority of the buildings were constructed without proper safeguards. It is said that about 75% of all buildings in the state aren't designed to handle a Cascadia megaquake. When the Cascadia quake hits, the shaking alone will set off landslides throughout the region, up to 30,000 in Seattle alone. And that's just the beginning. The ground itself might start behaving like a liquid, a process known as liquefaction. This happens when the intense shaking turns solid ground into something more like quicksand, with devastating consequences for anything built on it. Take Seattle, for instance. About 15% of the city sits on liquefiable land, including 17 daycare centers and the homes of more than 34,000 people. And that's not just Seattle. Oregon's critical energy infrastructure hub, a six-mile stretch in Portland that handles 90% of the state's liquid fuel and houses everything from electrical substations to natural gas terminals, also sits on land at risk of liquefaction. Sooner, the shaking will finally stop. But for a few minutes more, the destruction will continue as the region continues to crumble under its own weight. And then, just when you think it can't get worse, the wave will arrive. And that's when the real destruction will begin. The Tsunami When it comes to natural disasters, tsunamis are as close as it gets to being completely unsurvivable. The best way to survive one? Simple, don't be there when it happens. If you're in a vulnerable area, the only chance you have is to get to high ground as quickly as possible. For the 71,000 people living in Cascadia's inundation zone, that means evacuating in a narrow window, after the earthquake has shaken the ground to its core, but before the tsunami arrives to wash it away. Even with systems and sounding alarms, there will be precious little time to act. The ground shaking is the unmistakable cue to get moving immediately. And move they must, on foot though. The earthquake will almost certainly make roads impassable, so driving won't be an option. Depending on their location, they'll have anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes to reach safety. Think about that for a moment. 10 to 30 minutes is barely enough time to get out, let alone find a flashlight, tend to an injury, search for loved ones, or try to help others. Every second will count, and every delay could be the difference between life and death. If the earthquake and tsunami strike soon, the impact will be staggering. Millions of lives, countless homes, critical infrastructure, and natural environments will be at risk, and the death toll could exceed 10,000 with over 30,000 people injured. The economic losses? An estimated $70 billion in Washington, Oregon, and California alone. The reality is chilling. If you're in the tsunami's path, you need to be ready to move, fast, because when that wave comes, it won't wait. So, what do you think about the threat of the Cascadia Megaquake? 
Are we taking it seriously enough? Or are we underestimating the danger right beneath our feet? Share your opinions in the comment section below. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure to also subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell for more videos like this one.